Effective or not, people have been torturing each other for thousands of years. People have also been sailing for thousands of years. So perhaps it would come as no surprise that these two activities have occasionally overlapped. Whether it's pirates, navies, or anything in between, there is a long, brutal history of torture being utilized at sea. Of course, there's always been the obvious beating, flogging, cutting, but one more creative option was favored among pirates in the late 1600s. This technique was called wolding. When wolding, a rope was wrapped around a person's head. The rope was then tightened until the subject's eyes exploded from their sockets. Another popular technique was hanging from the yardum. The yardum is a horizontal beam that extends from the ship's mast. In this method, ropes were tied around a man's legs and groin. He was then hoisted up to hang from the yardum before being dunked down into the ocean. This was repeated over and over until the subject talked or whatever. This was disorienting, painful, and could even turn deadly. Marine John Dallinger was hung from the yardum until he died after murdering two shipmates. Usually less deadly was the game of blooding and sweating. In this quote, game, a captive was made to run in between two lines of sailors. As the captive passed, the sailors jabbed and stabbed at him using knives. From there, they would lock the victim in a barrel full of cockroaches or other insects. Another option was simply to have the man keep running and keep being stabbed until he collapsed. With all of that said, the granddaddy of nautical torture was undeniably keel hauling. The ship's keel is like the backbone of the ship, running lengthwise along the center of the bottom of the hull from bow to stern. To keel haul a person, a man was tied at his wrists or ankles. He was then tossed into the water and dragged along the ship's keel lengthwise or across the ship. This was a truly horrific form of torture. For starters, a person could drown or they could suffer a head injury as their body was dragged under the ship. But most painfully of all, the bottom of a sailing ship is not smooth. It's covered in razor-sharp barnacles. As the victim was dragged along the hull of the ship, these barnacles shredded their flesh. It was something like rubbing a person's body on a giant cheese grater. It's also worth noting that during the age of sail, infection was a much more real danger than it is today. Almost inevitably, sailors who were keel-hauled would suffer from serious, probably lethal infections. It would be pretty easy to imagine 16th century pirates keel-hauling prisoners or disobedient crew members, but like many things from the Age of Sail, conclusive evidence is scarce. There is a noted woodcut of a man being keel-hauled, but this dates back to the Tudor period, which is significantly before the Golden Age of Piracy. There also exists a painting called The Keel-Hauling of the Ship's Surgeon of Admiral. This was painted by a Dutch artist in the mid to late 1600s. It depicts a seemingly very public display of keel hauling. Indeed, keel hauling was once an officially sanctioned punishment in the Dutch Navy. But aside from that, first-hand accounts of keel hauling are very few and far between, so most likely it was a form of torture, but one that was quite rarely used. Author Alexander Exquemelin is famous for his book, The History of the Buccaneers of America. He wrote this after witnessing the activities of early pirates in the West Indies. In this book, he details some of the torture methods favored by early American buccaneers. According to Exquemelin, pirates were known to hang prisoners by their genitals, until those genitals were torn from their bodies anyways. Exquemelin also witnessed pirates stretching victims' bodies with ropes tied to their fingers and toes. He even wrote of the pirate captain Francois Lollonet, who once cut out a prisoner's heart and attempted to eat it raw. So, whatever happened to good old walking the plank? Well, it did happen on a few occasions, but according to historical records, it was a pretty rare event. One 1788 book defines it as a punishment reserved for failed mutineers. In the early 1800s, a few plank-walking episodes were recorded. In one such incident, a Dutch sailing crew were boarded by pirates, and every crew member was forced to walk the plank, with cannonballs tied to their feet. Altogether, though, walking the plank was much more common in fiction than on any real sailing ships. Last, not least, and perhaps most famously, there is also the idea of marooning sailors. While more execution than torture, this was very much a real thing, at least according to the bylaws established by noted pirate Bartholomew Roberts. Marooning was reserved for traitors, mutineers, and crew members who stole from the ship. 
The marooned pirate would take with him some food, a container of water, and a loaded pistol, so he could commit suicide if he so desired. Pirates were often marooned on sandbars rather than islands. This meant that when high tide came in, it was decision time. The marooned pirate could either take his own life, drown, or just take his chances swimming the high seas. 